Hello everyone and welcome to Marina's Decacord channel. Today we'll discuss a very important topic uh, about multi-string guitars and about classical guitars. And also I'll tell you a very interesting story, a very interesting accident from the classical guitar history. That's why watch till the end. To begin with, after my latest video about 10 string guitar, it was called Why Guitar Needs 10 Strings. I've got request to explain and show what special things a 10 string guitar can do, what special techniques one can use only on 10 string guitar. And this request has prompted me to start from the very beginning, from explaining the most important thing first, the reason why the modern 10 string guitar was constructed. And by the way, it happened in the 20th century. The reason is resonance and overtones. Now let me introduce you some theoretical material. Overtone is a sound accompanying the main tone produced by a vibrating body. The number and loudness of overtones determine the tone color of a musical sound. Overtones are present in the human voice and in the sound produced by musical instruments. When a stretched string is plucked, it vibrates in a number of different ways at the same time. Vibrating as a whole, it produces its lowest tone. This tone is called the string's fundamental or first harmonic. The string also vibrates in halves, producing a sound with twice the frequency of the fundamental. This tone is an octave above the fundamental and is called the first overtone or second harmonic. Vibrating in thirds, the string produces a sound with three times the fundamental frequency. This second overtone or third harmonic is one octave plus the fifth above the fundamental. The string vibrates at even higher frequencies, but each higher frequency the overtone becomes weaker. When we plug the string, it begins to produce sound, to vibrate, both as a whole and in halves, thoughts and etc. And each sound we produce on guitar begins to resonate with other strings of the instrument and the vibrations it produces provokes the other string's overtones, first and second, especially hearable. So, the conclusion. The number of other string's overtones we provoke with plucking a single guitar string depends on, first, the quantity of strings, and second, the tuning of the strings, because what overtones will have depends on the fundamental sound and the frequencies of the rest of the strings. Now you know the theory, and that means that the time has come to tell the story. I've read the story in a book called Things About the Guitar by Jose Ramirez the Thought. Chapter was called The Ten String Guitar. The Luthier Jose Ramirez the Thought was obsessed with achieving an enriched sound in the guitar. It led him to study an old instrument Viola de Mora, which had a very interesting feature that impressed the luthier. There are as many strings on the inside of this viola as there are on the outside, which are the ones that are played. When one plays this instrument, the inner strings vibrate sympathetically with the outer ones, and as a result, Viola de Mora produces a louder harmonically enriched sound. Ramirez applied the system to guitar. Obviously it was difficult, but he made it, to get the same sound results. This is how he describes it. I made a guitar with two bridges, one normal outer one and another inner one, where the six inside strings were attached, to be tuned just as the outer ones. These inner strings ran through the hollow neck to the head where a double machine head served to tune the 12 strings. The result of this whole contrivance was a powerful, beautiful sound. Ramirez showed the new build guitar to Maestro Segovia, who was in Madrid at the time. Segovia was impressed with the sound, but he pointed out the main failing of the invention. 
The inner strings kept on resounding even when they weren't needed. And it was merely the continuation of a piece being played. So it seemed necessary to cut off the sound of the inner strings when needed. Ramirez began thinking on finding a solution to this problem, but couldn't find a really good one until he showed the thing to Narcissa Yepes. He was very enthusiastic to help in solving the problem, and soon Yepes suggested a solution. He proposed to assemble a special device inside the guitar that would be activated by a remote control located on the footstool. This control would act as a piano pedal, activating the device inside the guitar to muffle the inner strings whenever necessary. Ramirez was not very keen in putting so much extra gadgetry into guitar, but though it had been the only solution to that moment, he decided to give it a try. But suddenly Yepes contacted the Lucia one more time. He telephoned Ramirez and told the words which led to a Yepes designed 10 string guitar building. He told, forget the inner strings. If you add four strings to the six normal strings, all on the outside, and these four strings tuned in a certain way for which I have made a study, we will have the same resonant and harmonics supports as with the inner strings, but with the advantage that by using a special technique they can be easily muffled with the right hand whenever necessary. <laughs> have you already understood what he was speaking about going back to the theoretical overtones part of this video? In fact, this was a 10 string guitar. Ramirez had built this construction and invited Yepes to test the instrument. This is how the Lucia describes his memories of this day. I turned over this guitar to Yepes, who began to try it out by playing a piece. He resembled a first-year student or even worse. After some time he looked skyward. I feared that he was going to release a string of insults, but he didn't. What he said was this. What a marvelous mess I have gotten myself into. Do you want to make sure? I'll show you soon in this video. You have to hear it with your own ears. Yes? Now you can understand why I explained some theory about the overtones in the beginning of this video. This is exactly what Yepes had taken into account coming up with his 10-string guitar idea. He wanted all the notes of the chromatic scale, played on normal 6 strings, to be resonant. Unlike the 6-string classical guitar, where uh, only a few of them are resonant. And his special bass tuning made it possible. As you can see, his basses were actually not for playing, they were for making resonance, but he also played them sometimes. I use another bassist tuning. It's a combination of Yepis' idea and my own ideas. There are three things I take into account when choosing a tuning for a particular piece. First, low basses. My basses are descending low, but not diatonically as most modern 10-string guitars are usually being tuned. Second, the key. How exactly I tune my basses depends on the key of the particular piece, and it gives me several advantages like I have the most often used basses as open strings, and it's very comfortable. Third, resonance. The most important notes of the tonality are resonant, and the rest are less resonant or just practically not hearably resonant. I found it more convenient for me than Yepis' idea, because I think when every single note of the chromatic scale is resonant, it becomes really inconvenient to muffle the rest of the strings while playing something really fast, for example. And in my variant I get quite resonant, but more clean sound, I think. And this point can also be considered as one of the advantages of the tuning dependent on the key. So now I'll show you the resonance I get from my 10 string guitar tuned with one of my favorite tunings for G minor. But before this, if you like this kind of material and 
if you want me to make more videos of this kind, please press your like button and press your subscribe button. Thank you. Now I'll play several notes and then make them silent. And we'll listen to the other strings resonance for their overtones which have been provoked by playing a particular note. Special thanks to everyone who supports me on my Patreon page. If you also want to join my Patreon family, you are highly welcomed. And find the link in the description of this video. Thank you and see you soon. Mm -hmm.